My project box! Oh. My. God. Hello everybody, Prow here, and welcome to another Bedrock Eyed episode. And I stand here beside my new friend, Creepy Deep, who is a result of a stream reward for, for Pasta Nevada, who's also one of my patrons. Creepy Deep is going to stay in this jail cell forever. This is the pesky creeper that has been bugging me since the beginning of the season, always trying to blow me up and kill me. And now he is pacified in his cage to remain forever. Now, for all four of you that watched last episode, um, not a lot of people watched the last one because it's been a while since I posted one. I don't know. Anyways, for all of you that did watch it, here is the nether hub that Blue Jay and I were working on finishing. I love how awesome this place is. And if you want to see it being built, check out the last episode or check out some of my future streams because we are still finishing quite a bit of it that is not done in those future streams. But the reason that we are in the nether hub is because our project today is close by. And when I say close by, I actually mean really close by. Like right over, you can't really even see it from here. Interesting. Right over here. It is a blaze spawner. Cause yes, we will, we will be setting up a blaze spawner today because we need lots of fuel. I am completely out of fuel. When I mean completely, I mean a hundred percent. I got nothing. And there's lots of good ways to get fuel. There's bamboo farms, wither skeleton farms, kelp farms, but we are going to do the blaze farm today because I like that it's close by to the hub. Plus blaze are an excellent source of fuel and used for crafting as well with the blaze powder. So why not get both of those together? And this farm is extremely easy to set up. You guys are gonna absolutely love this. How easy is this thing to set up you ask? Well, let me show you. All you do is you just stand here and you swing and kill. I'm just kidding. That's not how easy it is. But this thing requires absolutely no redstone at all. You will need no redstone unless you decide to build the trident killer, which of course we're going to do. So if you're looking for something super simple and 100% efficient, meaning it will take advantage of 100% of the speed that the spawner is able to put out, then this is going to be the farm for you. And here's a quick shot of some of the supplies you're going to need. These aren't in exact quantities, but you can kind of take a look here and see, generally speaking, what it is that you're going to need. I usually bring extra of everything. That's a good idea for any project to do. Um, but I'm sure somebody will drop down into the description box below exactly how many, not in the description, but in the comments below, exactly how many of each of these that are going to be needed. So just keep an eye out in the comments down below. And if somebody happens to comment it, I'll pin it in so that way it's easier to find. And the first thing we're actually going to do is to deactivate this spawner. Now to do that in the nether, you're going to need some glowstone. Let me see if I can land somewhere generally right here. And what we're going to need to do is we need to chop out the block below this. And what we could do is we could put a, oh, not that block. We're going to get spawned on. We need to put a block here, 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 and there. Now that is deactivated. You have to surround it with uh, glowstone or a block of some sort doing torches on all sides will not work, uh, but that will shut it down perfectly fine. Also, just to be extra safe, uh, I'm just gonna block off this area around us a little bit better just so nothing can at least easily sneak up on us because trust me, things will try to sneak up on us, including magma cubes that will probably still bounce over this anyways, but at least this will block them off a little bit better. We don't have to worry about any wither skeletons getting us either. Now, spawners on Bedrock Edition do work a little bit differently than on Java Edition. On Java Edition, it spawns out four blocks in each direction, I believe up and down as well. And Bedrock's a little bit different. It actually will do a pattern kind of like this. Uh, let's see, let me get up here. So it'll go uh, out one. Oh, this is here. Let's actually get on the spawner level here just to show you better. So this is block one, two, three, and four. And you will go out in each direction first. So one, two, three, four. But then what it does is it actually connects in diagonally. So that right there, that right there, and that right there. And it makes this kind of diamond shape. So these are all the spawnable spots. So what we're going to want to do is we're actually want to shove put we're going to put some glass and I'm going to use glass specifically just because I like to see what goes on inside the spawner, but you don't have to use glass. You can use whatever block you want. 
we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna outline this thing in glass one two three four so that fifth block out here this is going to trap in all of our spawnable spaces that way these guys will only spawn in in the spots that we need and we're gonna do just like that and we're gonna connect up all sides you'll see what it looks like in just a second now also for spawners these guys oh gosh no No! My project box! Oh. My. God. That just seriously happened. <sighs> I've solved the problem. We now have a bunker. There's gonna be no gas fireballs getting in here and blowing up my project shulker box again, which I've set back up and I hopefully I have enough of these coral fans. I have less than I, than I did last time, but I think we're gonna be okay. Anyways, I don't even remember where I was before we were so rudely interrupted, but we need, oh, actually I need some stuff from this. Let's grab something to pillar with. Let's grab some glass and let's get out of here. So I believe I was talking about the spawn radius for these guys and essentially it'll go up one and then two block one block above actually and then one block below so what we're going to do is we're going to go one here and we're going to go all the way around and trace our diamond just like this and then above that we're going to just close off the ceiling area here by just just filling in all the space above and that's all we need to do for the top side of this thing. It's not like Java Edition where I believe in Java you have to go like four blocks above. Bedrock has a little bit easier for these spawners. So we'll do this and then we'll pop those out at the very end. I wouldn't worry about those yet because we don't want any blaze spawning while we're doing all of this. Stay tuned to the very end of the episode because I have a couple very minor tweaks that you're going to want to make. Now the next part is we need to go seven blocks below the spawner level. So I'm gonna dig this platform down a little bit and just make a like safer platform area for us to stand on. And we'll have our seven blocks down. And then after we reach that seventh block, that's when we're gonna start funneling this thing into a center point. All right, funnel here is finished or the top part of it anyways. And now we actually need, oh, hello. Don't shoot me. Uh, so now we actually need to start funneling it in so to do that what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna place a temporary block on each of these for just a moment we'll be able to to knock these out after and then we're actually gonna bring these down by two on each one of these corners just like this and then we're gonna do that i think two more times after this and um and i'll kind of explain how this system works and what it's doing whoa did you see that dude he just ninja all the way down here and he just ninja all the way down there oh my god he came from so high that's off the top rope right there holy crap oh my god and it's another blaze where are they coming from go away this place is dangerous now this is the most important step so make sure you do this take notes okay so don't and don't mess it up look down below the video and click the like button and then show that subscribe button a little bit of love give it a little bit of a tap because video analytics show me that 60 to 70 percent of you are not subscribed to the channel right now so if you enjoy the videos that's the easiest way and the best way to support me i won't even charge anything for it it's free just click the subscribe button and now we're going to do the same thing again step it down another time and there we go and then I think we need to do it like one more solid time. And then we're going to have the kind of like funky one after this. So let me dig down a little bit further to get us some space to work. Funnel's complete. And now we at the very bottom one where you kind of have that like plus shape or T shape. Um, you just need to bring down two sides because we're going to have a two by two chamber exactly right there. So it's fine that they drop down here and here. That's not a problem at all. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to actually pillar nope i need to go get my coral fans it's coral fan time now we're going to take our coral fans and we're just going to place them at every spot that we can so kind of like this i'm, I'm probably not going to have enough am i i got a few more on me so that cl that covers all of those spots now we're going to go down a few and you only need them right below where the mobs can walk because the mobs actually think that they can walk on those they see that as a full block and they just walk over the edge and fall down to the next level which is exactly 
exactly what we want from them. This is not good. I don't have enough coral fans. I'm going to have to go back and get more. I only have one left. Urgh. And to finish it off, we were only just a couple short, really. We need to do one here, 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 and here. And we'll drop down to these guys right here and do one there. And then now, every single spot where a blaze can stand, they think that they can walk off that spot. And they're just going to keep filtering themselves down until they've reached this point down here. I have also heard, although I haven't observed this personally, so please feel free to double check this fact because it is not mine. But I have heard that Blaze will seek out a solid block to go stand on. So they don't like standing on the glass. And they would they would try to like get down here to try to like stand. So that might kind of force them to the center a little bit quicker if that's true. In any event, it's time to build the um it's time to build the trident killer. Now for the easiest part, setting up the trident killer. Trident killers are super easy. We're going to have our four squares right here. Actually here, just so you guys can see the, which ones they are better. We'll put a different block there for now. How about that? Uh, and then we are going to have pistons in alternating order, just like this. It'll always go on the right. So right, 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 and right. It could go on the left too. It's up to you, but just make sure you always put it on the same side for each direction that you face. And then we can actually go ahead and well, we won't do it yet, but we're going to close this up here in a second. Actually, what we're going to do first though, is we're going to knock out all of these extra blocks here that are not under the pistons. And then we're going to set up the portion that actually works the trident killer. We're going to end up using observers and we're going to end up using droppers. And the way that this thing is going to work is it is going to let's see we're gonna face the observer yeah that way and then the dropper or dispenser doesn't matter that can face any direction is totally fine we'll face him there face him there face it there face it there and then once i put in these last two you will see we get that repeating motion and it's a little annoying, it's a little loud. Maybe, should I, yeah, let's swap that out for uh, powered rails. I hadn't thought about that, but we'll use powered rails instead. Powered rails will work the same way. You could use redstone dust too, but the problem with using redstone dust is it's a little bit slower, which is actually not a problem for this farm. So if you want to use the redstone dust, by all means, go ahead and do it. There we go. No sound except for the pistons now. This is a lot less obnoxious. And then what we can do here is how about, let's go ahead and let's block off all of these sides in the corners here like this and then let's go ahead and let's throw our glass in we want to throw the glass in any lower we'll throw the glass in on this level like this how about that i think that'll look good then we can see inside the farm i'm always like hiding the corner or filling in the corners too that way the mobs can't glitch out and actually, we're going to put a floor in here now. And if you'd like to be able to turn this thing off, which is probably a good idea, just throw a block either on like the, the corner right here or on the floor in either one of these spots, anywhere where it would be touching a rail. We'll just put one right here. And then boom, that turns it off. Actually, I don't want it to be the one that's right in front right there. I don't know why, but I just don't. So we'll put it right here. And that takes care of that. And then also, I think I would like a block here. No, let's put a, we're going to put a slab right here, a top slab. We're going to knock this out like this, and then we'll put a couple of trap doors here. And then that will be the way that we both get experience points out of the system. And it'll actually make the blaze think that they can pathfind to us because when they see these trap doors, they're going to, they're not going to think that, or I guess they're not going to know. Did I not grab the trap doors? I have to go grab the trap doors. They're not far away. Um, it will and I need to have access to a crafting machine. I'll be right back. There we go So now we got a half slab here that'll allow the experience points to come in from underneath We got these guys right here It will actually make the blaze think they could path fine to me and we have trapped a magma cube pet in here for some odd reason Now I got to show you guys actually how we're going to set up the floor um, And actually I think to do that. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna let myself in here we're gonna knock out these blocks right here for just a couple moments and these blocks right here and then we're gonna set up a system to catch items right in here i have knocked down one two three blocks down into the floor 
and we're gonna go ahead and send our items in this direction because we do have like some land over there so depending on how far out we go that should work so I'm gonna click the hopper on the side right here I'm gonna hold down the shift button and click a hopper into that into that and into that so now all items will go exactly right there to that hopper and then what we can do is we need to take our fences here because this is going to help us align our hopper minecart. We're going to put a hopper minecart right there. And that hopper minecart is going to suck up all items. Please don't be lava under this. Whew, I was a little scared. I don't know why I even did that. <laughs> and we can take a rail and actually let's craft our hopper minecart. Let's put a rail here. Let's put our hopper minecart here. It's pushing forward a little bit. Knock the rail out. Push it over just to sit somehow in the center like that should be perfectly fine build up a couple spots and we can knock out this fence this fence and this fence and now what will happen and we'll just leave this to brick it will be able to pick up any items that fall down right here as you can see I can throw items down anywhere in this area um, or anywhere towards the center on any block and it'll work and it's fine for it to be, you know, if an item doesn't get sucked up like over there on the edge because the pistons will move it around and it'll center it up every single time. So it's not going to hurt us any for it to be that way. And actually, we need to change this and I need to face this observer back in that direction like this. I think that's not going to work. OK, let me get this observer straight and then we'll set up the storage. And there we go. I got a little hopper line, just a very basic hopper line run out. Hoppers facing forward. We will put shulker boxes here and we got regular storage to go right here, which is perfect. And then I'm just going to kind of seal off the area a little bit and then we should be able to try this out for the first time. And we should just be able to knock all of these out. Hopefully not break the spawner in the process. If I break the spawner in the process, I give up and I'm deleting the world. <laughs> we'll be extra careful not to break the spawner. And let's go ahead and knock that out. That out. Can I reach this one? That. That. We could put a block right there because we don't want any blaze to sit on top or get on top in any way, shape, or form. And then we could knock out that. That. And now I think we are all good. So let's close this back up. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. And as long as you built it like me, should not have a problem with the spawner staying on. You see ours is on. Uh, we did not put any tridents in here yet. So let's we can still go ahead and do that. It's not too late. It's not too late. Um, let's go ahead and open these. Let's get this guy out the way. And yeah, let's go ahead and throw down trident one, trident two. Um, on bedrock condition, you can do these big trident killers. They work really great. The tridents do not take any kind of durability loss at all and you will get the XP and if you hold out your looting sword you will get the drops from the looting as well and as you can see they are coming down it does not matter at all that they like to linger up there at the top for a little while so do not worry about that because they are seven blocks below the spawner therefore the spawner will think that there's no blaze in the area and it will keep spawning so all we got to do is leave this guy going and as you can see it is going to kill these guys no problem at all as they drop down and they will all eventually drop down. So again, this is 100% efficient. You cannot get one to go faster than this for a single. Um, they do like to float back up and down a little bit, but again, not really that big of a deal. Um, all you gotta do is just wait for them to build up and they work their way down, they die. You get the XP through here, and then you get all of the drops down through here. So you can see I can go down, I can take a look, and we should have some drops starting to fill in here, which I'm gonna go ahead and get some shulker boxes and fill that up. And I'm back to show just a couple of changes that you're going to need to make to earlier in the video. They are extremely minor, but I do need to show these off. Number one, these two middle blocks that go right over top of the spawner, make them some sort of solid block because the glass does not block spawns by the blaze. So if you put these there, the blaze won't be able to spawn there and get stuck on top. Otherwise, they're going to get trapped in the glass there. Number two. Um, for some reason, and I'm not sure why on this, because we do have all of our distances correct. We got one, two, three, four, five. But for some reason, some blaze were getting trapped in these outer pieces of glass right here with their heads right here. So what I did to keep that from happening was I put a ring of solid blocks just around this top row right here. That way the blaze either A, aren't glitching through it anymore, or B, if they do, they will actually suffocate in this block and die. So that is another fix that you can make that will keep the blaze from building up up at the top. 
And then lastly, there's a couple of important changes here because I've, I've AFK'd a number of times. You could probably tell I've died. <laughs> I died like three or four times um, AFKing here because I don't know if we'll see it here or not. And hopefully this isn't too loud for me to talk over. But sometimes these guys, they're going to glitch into this block right here and through this block right there, the one right there. So I was standing here and a blaze would glitch through here and he would kill me. And I even made it too thick and I like AFK on the other side of it right there. Still glitched through and found a way to kill me. So what I've done was I actually put a block and a half slab here and then I left an air block here. So that's all air. And then this side is air as well. And then now I have not had a single blaze after two nights of AFKing here. I've not had a single blaze get out. So I made myself a little room just to keep myself safe. This is a good idea generally, just in case somehow a mob like ninjas his way in here, or maybe somehow a blaze finds a way to like squeeze out through this edge. It shouldn't happen, but let's just say for argument's sake, my two days of testing, two nights of testing don't hold up. If it happens, you're in here. They can't get you. You can't die. The XP can still come through here and get to you just fine. So you'll get plenty of levels. That's not a problem. And the blades will not be able to escape. One last thing I'd like to point out too, because you're going to see this. And I'm t uh, even though I've said it earlier, a lot of people are going to think, oh my gosh, this farm is slow or it's broken or whatever. You are going to have blaze hanging out up through here in this area. It let me let me let me make it clear. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You can have every single one of those blocks right through there with blaze on it, which by the way, you won't. You'll have some on this side of it because they do still like look at you and target you through the glass. So you may end up with eight or ten blaze just chilling here after an AFK session. It doesn't matter. They're still going to continue to spawn at the same rate because that spawner does not see or detect any of the blaze in any position they could possibly send in at all. It is not going to affect your rates. And I've, I've AFK here. Like I said, it's been a couple of nights. I got blaze rods, blaze rods, blaze rods. I have three others that I've already taken out blaze rods and this one's starting to fill in. So we are getting a ton of blaze rods for a ton of fuel. And this thing has worked spectacularly. Hopefully these minor changes won't affect you guys at all. They were pretty minor, but also very important for you to make. Yeah, this is going to set us up for success for the rest of the season. I can now AFK over here at the gold farm and then have my uh, furnaces go through and actually smelt all of my swords down. I ran out of fuel for that. Um, also, as you can see, I got a little bit of fuel left over here because I stole it from somewhere else, but I can fill this up so we can get all the smooth stone that we need to. I've run out of fuel for all of those things, so it's going to set us up for success there, which by the way, we will be building an awesome stone mason building right there in the next episode, so make sure you check that out. But uh, more importantly for this is we will have a super smelter somewhere over here hidden under a blacksmith type shop, so stay tuned. I don't know where that's going to go yet, but it's going to go under one of these cool buildings that we're going to have put in over over here and we're going to need lots of fuel for that so the blaze farm is definitely going to help that out in any event thank you guys so much for watching the episode i do appreciate it if you like the episode click the like button drop me some uh tips and tricks and things for the other viewers down in the comment section below i love seeing them and then also if you did enjoy this episode and want to see more click that subscribe button remember it's down there just give it a little love tap give it a tap and we will be all good to go <laughs> thank you guys so much i appreciate it you have a good one. Goodbye.